بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى من تبع هداهم إلى يوم الدين Another class with waging war against the shaitan and tonight inshallah we'll be speaking about the importance of praying in jama'ah in congregation because praying in jama'ah is one of those things that you could really use against the shaitan. The shaitan always comes to the person when in his own, but if he's with jama'ah and praying salat al-jama'ah, then uh, the shaitan will be away from him. We talked about last time sticking to the jama'ah, that's the main body of the Muslims and their imam, but we're talking about today the salat al-jama'ah itself. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, مَا مِنْ ثَلَاثَةٍ فِي قَرْيَةٍ أَوْ بَدْوِمْ لَا تُقَامُ فِيهِمُ الصَّلَاةِ إِلَّا وَقَدْ إِسْتَحْوَذَ عَلَيْهِمُ الشَّيْطَانِ Meaning, uh, if there are three people in a village or in an outside area from the town where the salah is not established in them, then the shaitan will overwhelm them, will overcome them, will rule them, will be in control of them. فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالْجَمَاعَةِ So hold on to the jama'ah. Which jama'ah, he said? The jama'ah, which is the jama'ah al-masjid. The jama'ah that we pray to together, to get them in jama'ah as in together, praying together. For verily, the wolf takes the sheep, which is away from the flock of the sheep. For the person who is guarding his salat al-jama'ah, he is in a well-built fortress from the shaitan al rajim And the one who does not have any importance or does not feel that it is significant, or he does deal with it as in a lightly, in a light, lightly uh, way, then he will expose himself to the harm of the shaitan, to the attack of the shaitan, just like the sheep on her own she uh, you know expose herself to the attack of the wolf because she's away from the flock so the salat al-jama'ah only can be uh, observed by those who are proper believers righteous they will not go behind they will not stay behind like the hypocrites or the munafiqun they're not like the women or the ones who are holding a legitimate excuse to stay behind like for example is ill or old can come as for the proof that no one or the only people who are observed the Salat al-Jama'ah in congregation are the proper righteous people, the ayah in Surah Al-Nur, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فِي بُيُوتٍ أَذِنَ اللَّهُ أَن تُرْفَعْ وَيُذْكَرَ فِيهَا اسْمُهُ يُسَبِّحُ لَهُ فِيهَا بِالْغُدُوِّ وَالْأَصَالِ رِجَالٌ لَا تُلْهِهِ انْتِجَارَةُ وَلَا بَيْعٌ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِتَاءِ الزَّكَاهِ that this prayer is established in houses where Allah gave permission for his remembrance to be erected, in which places his name will be glorified. Glorified by whom? That's more, so glorified when? Morning and evening by men whom they're gonna, not going to be driven away from their remembrance of Allah by merchandise or by trade. Huh? Uh, that it will not divert them from establishing the prayer and giving the zakah because they are afraid of a day that in, in which that day in which that the hearts and the eyes are turned over. So this is the day of resurrection. So those are the men whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also he spoke about them in Surah Al-Mu'minun. Those are the ones whom Allah Azza wa said they are from the fear of Allah, they scared. And those are the ones who are believers in the signs of Allah Azza wa Jal, in the verses of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And those are the ones who do not commit shirk in their Lord. Uh, those are the ones who give what they give from the sadaqah, they give for they give from the good deeds, yet their hearts are scared. Is their deed going to be accepted or not? Because they're going to be returned to their Lord. Those are the ones who will race in the good and they will be in the front. Allah ibn Mas'ud, he says regarding uh, those people in description that the man will be brought, even though that he's ill to stand up in the, in the, in the, in the row for the congregation, yet he will be managing between two people to just to come to the jama'ah. Those are the people who will not abandon the jama'ah. As for the proof that the one who will abandon the jama'ah are those who are hypocrites, Prophet ﷺ, he said, the most heaviest prayer 
upon the munafiqeen. The hypocrites are the prayer of the Isha and the prayer of the Fajr. And if they know what is in them from the Ajr, they will come to it even crawling. And I, I'm about to command for the prayer to be uh, to be established. And I'm about to take a, a group of people where they have got a wooden stick with them. And I will burn the houses of those people who do not witness the Jama'ah. So the Prophet would make the prayer of Jama'ah to go ahead uh, and he will go with some people with him. They've got, they've got uh, some wooden stick with them and they will go to the houses of those people who do not witness the Jama'ah and will burn their houses down. Also, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud in that hadith, which is Zayma Muslim, which well, I, I'm going to write all of it, inshallah, together. He said that the person who stays behind from the prayer of the Jama'ah is the hypocrite whom his hypocrisy is known to everybody. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he described the hypocrisy in Surah At-Tawbah, قال, وَلَا يَأْتُونَ الصَّلَاةَ إِلَّا وَهُمْ كُسَالَةً They don't come to the prayer except they are, they are lazy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also, he said, وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالَةً Surah An-Nisa. And if they come to, to prayer, they come to it in a lazy uh, uh, fashion. So the proof that the Salat al-Jama'ah, that they, 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 the, uh, it is only attended except by the men or the righteous, that what we have mentioned in Surah An-Nur. And we have mentioned with Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. And also, Salat al-Jama'ah will not be attended by the women because it's not compulsory upon them. Because the Prophet Sallam, he said, do not prevent the women to, if they want to come to the masjid. But verily, the house is, is better for them. That means to pray the Jama'ah prayer in the house is better than to come to the masjid. Unless it is Taraweeh prayer, or unless, because it has to be in the masjid, or unless it is a prayer where uh, 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 by the, I mean, there is a, a benefit in it, an educational benefit that she needs to have it. So uh, the Taraweeh prayer, because it is, it's, it's, you know, Taraweeh prayer, it's not an option to do it in the house. Okay. Uh, Jumu'ah, no, she doesn't have to come to Jumu'ah because it's not compulsory upon her. But, but the Taraweeh, yes, if she wishes. And also uh, for the women, uh, the, where, the, where there's a talk and she's in need of that talk, then she comes come to the masjid. As for the proof where the, the jama'ah, the congregational prayer, is not compulsory upon those who are having legitimate excuse, is what we have from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Fear Allah as, as much as you can. لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَا Allah will not burden a soul except what it can take. إِذَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ فَأْتُوا بِهِ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if I command you with something, then do what you are able to do. And also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَنْ سَمِعَ النِّدَاءَ فَلَمْ يَأْتِي فَلَا صَلَاةَ لَهُ إِلَّا مِنْ عُذُرٍ He who does not hear the call of the Adhan, and he does not come to it, then there is no Salah for him except there is an excuse. So if there is an excuse, you could pray in the house. But if there is no excuse, then you are from those people who are hypocrites. So ask yourself, as a person who is now praying at home, you don't pray in the jama'ah, which category you belong to? Are you from the women? Okay, no jama'ah. Are you from those who got legitimate excuse? Uh, very ill uh, or old, uh, <clears throat> or you are attending an old person, you can't leave him because he's in need of you, uh, uh, or are you a hypocrite? Or you are from the good ones who come to the masjid. So which one? So you have to really uh, categorize yourself. So are you from the ones who have just stayed behind and preoccupied by the dunya looking at uh, your Ebays and how much money you could make so that the shaitan had overwhelmed you and he made you to, you know, remember, forget the members of Allah and forget the salah. Are you from those people? Maybe you haven't got, you, your masjid is too far. Okay, the masjid is far, but it doesn't mean that you abandon the masjid totally. At least you come twice a week, once, once a week, or every time you feel your heart is going down in its iman, so you need to revive. The only way to revive your iman is to mix up with good people. And the best place to mix up with good people is not the market, it's the masjid. So going to the masjid for your heart is like going to a garage for your car. Just like your car needs servicing, your heart needs servicing. The best place to service your heart is classes like this and also masajid. Go to the masjid. So if your masjid is far away and it's not within your encampment area, let's say it's a mile, a mile away or something, or half a mile away, then it, yes, okay, it's not compulsory upon you, but it becomes compulsory if you feel that your demand is dropping. So we're not going to say to you that you stay at home because you have got an excuse, your masjid is far. No, you come to the masjid, at least the Jum'ah, inshallah. Bismillah. Um, the proofs from the Quran and the Sunnah, and the proofs from the sayings of the companions regarding that this congregational prayer is compulsory 
except if there is a, an excuse, as we have said, you are a woman, you are ill, you are an old man, you are attending an old man, so so, or the masjid is far away from you. From the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah Al-Baqarah, حافظوا على الصلوات والصلاة الوسطى وقوموا لله قانتين Observe your prayers, especially the middle prayer, Asr prayer, and stand up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way which is called submissiveness, قنوت, uh, righteousness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also, he commanded his believers to observe the prayer, and from observing the prayer is that to pray it on time. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, uh, 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 Verily, the prayer is upon the believers as a timed book. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Jumu'ah, Ya ayu al-ladhina amanu, idha nudiya li salati min yawmi al-jumu'ati, fas'au ila dhikri Allah, wa dharu al-bay'a, thalikum khayrun lakum in kuntu ta'lamun. Meaning, O you who believe, if the prayer for the Jumu'ah has been called to, then go ahead and fulfill this call and leave aside the trading and selling. For verily, this is better for you if you know better. This is better for you if you know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the believers to respond to the call of the Adhan, the masjid, and to come to the jama'ah, to the masjid, okay, and especially Salat al-Jumu'ah, and also in the five daily prayers. And establish the prayer and give the zakah and bow with the ones who they bow. In this ayah, in this particular ayah, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commands his believers, number one, to establish the prayer. Number two, to give the zakah. Number three, to make ruku amongst the people who make ruku. Bow with the ones who are bowing. How can you bow with the ones who are bowing? Except in the masjid, where the people are there, the masjid. This is the only one, not in the markets. So what? So the, 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 the command here is the command for compulsion. So you have to come, that is, to the masjid, just like you are, you are. So the first command was to give the to establish the prayers. First, second command is to um, give the zakah. The third command is to bow with the ones who bow. That means the jama'ah. So the first one is compulsory, which is to establish the prayers. Second one is compulsory to give the zakah. So you say to me, the third one is not compulsory. So if you, if you contemplate this ayah, so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Surah Al Baqarah, wa aqimu salata wa atu zakata wa rakam al rakim, establish the prayer. Give the zakah and bow with the ones who bow. So you've got establishing the prayer, that's compulsory. Giving the zakah, that's compulsory. And bowing with the bowings, that means but the bowers, the ones, that means praying jama'ah, it has to be compulsory. You cannot differentiate, you give this and this, say this is recommended. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَإِذَا كُنْتَ فِيهِمْ فَأَقَمْتَ لَهُمُ الصَّلَاةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذَا كُنْتَ فِيهِمْ فَأَقَمْتَ لَهُمُ الصَّلَاةِ فَلْتَقُمْ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْهُمْ مَعَكْ وَلْيَأْخُذُوا أَسْلِحَتَهُمْ فَإِذَا سَجَدُوا فَلْيَكُونُوا مِنْ وَرَائِكُمْ وَلْتَأْتِ طَائِفَةٌ أُخْرَى لَمْ يُصَلُّوا فَلْيُصَلُّوا مَعَكْ وَلْيَأْخُذُوا حِذْرَهُمْ وَأَسْلِحَتَهُمْ وَدَّ الَّذِينَ لَمْ تَغْفَلُونَ عَنْ أَسْلِحَتِكُمْ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayat meaning basically is talking about the war and Allah azza wa jal is talking about the, the, the way that the companion they should be that is in war to even when it comes to the jama'ah it has to be uh, to the sorry to the prayer it has to be a prayer of jama'ah so let's just uh, reverse this ayat قال الله سبحانه وتعالى said وإذا كنت فيهم فأقمت لهم الصلاة and if you are to be amongst them oh Muhammad and you have established the prayer فلتقم طائفة منهم معك let one group that means this is one of the ways of praying صلاة الخوف Pray of the, the let uh, a group of them, I mean, not all of them, to pray with you. And let them take their weapons with them. So you've got the sword with them, the spear with them, the shield with them. And if they're to be prostrate, so they, these people who got their guards to be behind in case the enemy will come. And then another group will come who did not pray. Then let them pray with you. And let them take their weapons and let them be on alert. So Allah SWT said, the kuffar, they are in, in, in position, they like to, that if you are not aware, you're not taken, you're, alert, you're not alerted, that you are not watching your weapons, you're not watching what, you, what you're doing, that they will straight away come to you and kill all of you. 
إن كان بكم أذى من مطر أو كنتم مرضى أن تضعوا أسلحتكم and there is no harm upon you there is no sin upon you if you had some harm because of the rain or you were ill that is to put your arms you don't really involve yourself in the fight وخذوا حذركم take care إن الله أعد الكافرين عذابا مهينا الله سبحانه وتعالى he had prepared for the kuffar a severe punishment so here in this ayah when we find Allah عدل, he said فلتقم فلتقم let and here let is as a command form here command let and this is to make sure that the jama'ah in the ayah is to be compulsory Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he had commanded for the prayer to be in jama'ah in a time where you think it is impossible to make a jama'ah because the enemies are watching and we have more of excuse to pray on our own. Yet Allah is commanding us to pray in jama'ah, in the time of fear, in the land of the battlefield. So the Muslims are commanded to establish a prayer and make it in jama'ah. And the enemies of Allah and the enemies of the Muslims are there fighting them and watching. So if it was a sunnah, some people think, then Allah would not command them to pray this jama'ah in a time where their enemies are waiting for them for the opportunity to go and attack them. So that's why we say that the jama'ah was, and by the way, Salat al khaf has got more than six forms, six ways of doing it. One of them, which has been described in this ayah, and that is when the enemies, okay, when the enemies are, for example, at the back, and your qibla is in the front. So you're praying like this, and the enemies are like that. So I can't pray towards the enemy, I have to pray towards the qibla. So I have to divide the army, into two categories or two lines or two rows or two categories. You could say two divisions. It could be three rows with you and three rows behind or enough rows to protect you. So one row will be facing the enemies and one row, let's say two rows only. And one row or half of the army is where you praying. So the Prophet would say Allahu Akbar. The ones praying well, Allahu Akbar. And the other ones who are facing the enemies will say Allahu Akbar. They make takbir al-ihram against the Qibla. And then they will make ruku, they will make ruku, the other one will make ruku. And then Sami Allah, Sami Allah. When they go to sujood, the group which are facing the qibla will make sujood. Where the ones who are facing the enemies will not go to sujood because the enemies are waiting. If they all of them go to sujood, they'll be killed. So they will be waiting. So they'll make first sajda, second sajda, where the other one is waiting. And then, okay, after this finished, then the group will change. The enemies is watching you. Hang on a second. They're praying or they're playing. So one, the ones who had finished will go and swap, okay, with the other ones. And then the, this one will come and they will make their sajda because they haven't made their sujood. They are still in the position of Sami Allah and Hamid. They made the first sajda, second sajda. And then they'll say, Allahu Akbar, and everybody will get up. And the other one, which has been behind the Prophet, now they're watching the enemies. And they do the second rak'ah together. Okay, and the, and then the, when they finish, remember the the, the ones will finish with the, behind the prophet, uh, and then after they finish, the other one will come and make the sajda, and then they will finish the prayer. So here we find uh, a, a very amazing way of doing it. Now, I think there's a, a YouTube clip of not myself, but it's been done in a proper army training the Muslim army, how to do Salat al khaf It's amazing to look at it. It's one of the ways, which is people watching behind, okay? And there is another one, which is people watching in the front. And one will make full rak'ah with him, and the other one is still waiting for the second rak'ah. Or the second rak'ah, and then they will do the second, uh, the first rak'ah on their own, and then they will do the second rak'ah with the, the Prophet. Uh, so as I said, it's an amazing way. There's six ways or more, I believe it's six ways at least, of performing Salat al khaf Okay. Uh, as from the proofs of the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, that the Jama'a prayer is compulsory, we find lots of proofs. We have the uh, uh, hadith of uh, the blind man, uh, uh, Ibn Umi Maktoub. He came to the Prophet ﷺ. He said, Messenger of Allah, I am a blind person. I have no one to lead me to the masjid. So I, he asked the Prophet ﷺ for a, a, a concession, an excuse to stay, pray, to pray at home. So he gave him a concession at the beginning. But when he left, it looks like there's an uh, abrogation for this revelation. A revelation came to tell him, he said, no, he has to come back. So he called him and he said to him, do you hear the adhan? Are you able to hear the adhan? That's the, that's, the, that's the only excuse. If you don't hear it, no problem. Do you hear the adhan? He said, yes. He said, you have to come and pray. 
So you as a person who is staying behind, not praying the jama'ah, aren't you afraid that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take away your sight and become blind? Even if you became blind, still you have got no excuse to stay behind and not to pray the jama'ah. So fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear the one who is giving you the sight. Fear the one who is giving you the health. Fear the one who is making you even closer to the masjid. Fear the one who is uh, making it available for you to use a, a mount, to use a car. Okay, And you've got the, the, your house, you've got your money, you've got your children, you've got your wife. You've got luxury. And yet uh, 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 you don't go to the masjid. If you're living in a Muslim country, you'll be able to listen to the adhan. Here yeah, we can't listen to hear the adhan, except in a few places. Uh, so it doesn't have, you know, you don't have an excuse. Of, I don't hear the adhan. Well, I mean, you have to imagine if the muaddin is going to go to on top of the roof of the masjid, he makes an adhan. Would you be able to hear it? Even if you don't hear it, we say to you that you have to come once in a while, once in a while at least for your heart to bring the iman. Because if you're away from the masjid for a long time, believe your iman goes drop down and, and down. Especially with this lockdown now, we have a lot of excuse to stay behind a long time. So go to the masjid. Uh, we used to complain that the masjid, some of them, they closed because of the lockdown. But I have more complain. And when the masjid are open, people are not going there. I said, I'm on lockdown. Allah, I have seen a person whom the masjid is next to him. And he's not praying the Jumu'ah. So what is an excuse for him? If he says, for example, this masjid is not open, go to another masjid. If this masjid doesn't allow people who are over such a certain age, well, go to another masjid. Maybe it's got a certain, you know, it's got a different age. So you have to make your, you know, imagine Allah's going to ask you. You can't, you could have an excuse for myself, but before Allah, do you have the proper excuse? Then Allah, Allah's going to ask you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do you have a legitimate excuse to stay behind, not to pray the Jumu'ah? Subhanallah. Jumu'ah, you know, it's, not, it's different from the Jama'ah. Jumu'ah, you have to come to it. It's not just within an catchment area. So the scholar, they said at least six kilometers, uh, five to six kilometers. So uh, that's within your area. Because the Jumu'ah, imagine that you have left three Jumu'ah deliberately, Allah will put a seal in your heart. Another proof from the Prophet Wasallam, the one we just, we had quoted before, he who does hear the Adhan, he does not respond to it, there is no prayer for him except he's got an excuse. There's no prayer for him, it doesn't mean he's invalid, but it's not prayer for him, that means it's going to be sin. No prayer for him, that means he's not going to have a complete reward. Prophet Wasallam also, he said, in the hadith that we quoted, which is the heaviest prayer, the most difficult prayer for the hypocrites are the Isha and the Fajr. And then he said, I am almost a, a commander for the prayer to be established, the Jama'ah, and then I will go with another man, with lot, lots of men, and we're having the wooden stick to burn the houses of those people who did not come to the Jama'ah, would burn the houses down. Some of the people use this hadith on the opposite way. He said, well, this hadith tells us the Jama'ah is not compulsory. Why is that? He said, well, the Prophet of Allah commanded for the Salah to be established. Okay. And then he left the Jama'ah. He just went with a, a other group of people, or men. So the men did not witness the Jama'ah. And uh, that means this, the Jama'ah is not compulsory. So, subhanallah. So this hadith was intended to scare the person off if he does not come to the Jama'ah. These people using the hadith the opposite way. Say, so, no, no, the jama you see, the Jama'ah is not compulsory. Because if it's compulsory, then the Prophet ﷺ would not leave the Jama'ah itself. He commanded for the Jama'ah to be established and he left with uh, some people to go and burn the houses of those people who did not come to the Jama'ah. SubhanAllah, are you, are you conflicting with yourself? You see, that's a proof to say that if there is a mighty task that the person needs to do it and there is a Jama'ah that is excused, I'll give you, this could, could be used for example for those who are guarding the doors in the Haram. They don't pray with the jama'ah because they have a, a mission, which is very important to protect the people, protect anybody who would harm the masjid, protect the people from being in congestion on all of those things. That's why they don't pray. They're gods. They will pray as soon as they might they will do their own prayer. They don't even do the jummah. Because imagine everybody on the jummah, it's going to be, uh, you're going to be jeopardizing the safety and security of the people who pray. So that hadith is used for that. It's not to, use, to be used. I say, jama'ah is not compulsory. And what prevented the Prophet ﷺ to burn these houses, okay, 
because uh, the one who, who burns the houses and burns the people is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who's creator. No one can burn with anything except for Allah. That's the reason. There's a, a hadith which is not authentic, is the women and the children did not allow him to do that. Okay, well, even there is no women and children. He's not Allah's messenger, he's not allowed to go and burn people out. If we're going to burn the house, we're going to be burn the, the people in them. It's not the house is done that. So when they say you will burn the houses down, it doesn't mean they burn the house empty. No, no. It's like when you say if the garment is below your ankle, then it's in the fire. It's not the garment. The garment did not do anything wrong. It's you who are going to go to the fire because you made your garment below the ankles. Same thing here. House did not do anything wrong. It's you, the one who's in the house. So suppose you are at work. I have no problem, go and burn my house, I'm at work. No, it means that you're burning the people. And because no one would burn in the fire except the Lord of the fire, Allah the Almighty, that's why the Prophet Allah would not burn the people or burn the houses, including the people inside. Another proof where the jama'ah is compulsory, the hadith which I mentioned at the beginning, three people in a village or outside town where the jama'ah is not establishing them in them, then the shaitan will over control them, overwhelm them. He will be in control of them. Then hold on to the jama'ah. So that's a compulsory or a, 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 a command. Hold on to the jama'ah. For value, the, the wolf take the sheep, which is away from the flock. So for this person who do not pray in the jama'ah, shaitan will overcome him, will control him. So we have to, as a people, as you know, okay, to pray in Jama'ah. Some of us, unfortunately, they don't pray in Jama'ah. They pray in his house. So we'll ask the, the person who's praying in his house, do you feel the same impact when you pray in your house compared to your prayer in the masjid? Do you feel? No, but I think there's a huge difference. See, coming to the masjid, it just makes you link to the Prophet Sallam linked to these companions who are righteous, okay? So companions and the, the prophet did not find it's the same to pray at home and pray in the masjid. No, 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 no. Praying in the masjid is different because praying in the masjid, you're responding to the call of Allah Azza wa You're responding to the command of the prophet Sallallahu Also from the proofs of Allah Masood's mighty hadith, as I said, I'm gonna quote it in full at the end. And that is a man would be brought even though he's somehow is not capable, we'll be brought difficulty and you'll be put between two people in order to make the jama'ah. So the, the man who was ill in the time of the companions, he would be brought between two people until he would be put into the row. So this is a proof that the jama'ah is compulsory. And the jama'ah he was talking about in the masjid. But if the masjid is too far and you're praying at home, then we say to you, pray with your family, better than praying in Rome. Sahaba, they are imitating the Prophet ﷺ. For the Prophet ﷺ, in the time of his illness, when he was about to die, in the last days of his, he used to come to the masjid and he used to be held between two people from his family. Ali ibn Abi Talib would hold him to bring him to the masjid. Okay? So even his wives will hold him just to take him to the door where he could go to the masjid. And even they will bring him to the masjid, even his, his, his feet are dragging to the masjid. This is the one whom Allah Jal forgave for him the past and the future sins. That's what we find Al Imam al Bukhari had made a chapter title uh, regarding the person who prays Jama'ah and he's ill. So he said the chapter of the illness or the amount of illness of the person that would make him to witness the jama'ah. That means how much illness do you need to be exempted from the jama'ah? As for those who say that the jama'ah is sunnah, okay, and it's not compulsory, huh? they're using, you know, the hadith which I mentioned before, which is not really that much, but they use the following two hadiths. First one, Salat al-Jama'ah, Jama'ah's prayer is better than the jama'ah, than, than the praying on your own, 27 times, or it will be different 27 ranks. And the other hadith which is similar, praying of the person in the jama'ah is gonna be having a multiple compared to the prayer on his own in his house of 25, in his house or in his market, 25 times. 
So some of those uh, people who are taking these two hadiths has to be an alibi, an excuse that the jama'ah is not compulsory. First of all, these ahadith, they don't talk about the compulsory, the compulsion of the prayer of the jama'ah. They're not talking about whether the prayer is compulsory or not. They talk, they, they had, they, this hadith came just to show the amount of reward that you will be able to gain if you prayed in jama'ah compared to pray on your own. If you prayed in the masjid compared to be praying at home. Did not come to the, come to the, it's like uh, another hadith. Okay. Where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the hadith Sahib al Sabtiyatain that is not to walk with shoes between the graves. Not to walk with shoes with your graves. So when you are between the graves and you're able to walk, it's not muddy, then take off your shoes. Then we have another hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Sahih Bukhari, that when the people bury the person and they leave, the person who is inside the grave, he will be able, because his soul will come to him, he will be able only to hear the following, that is the footstep, the shoes, uh, sound of his, of his family companions leaving him. So they said, well, it's not, it's, it's, they say some of them, it is not really uh, prohibited to put your shoes on because this hadith says that this person will be able to hear the shoes of those people leaving him. We say, Habibi, my dear, that this hadith, it did not come for the sake of presenting the verdict regarding putting your shoes or not putting your shoes when you are between the graves. It came to show this hadith to, to, to present that this person, he will have his soul back and he will be questioned by Munkar and Nakir, the two angels, and he will be able to hear his people leaving him. He did not say he will be able to hear what the people talking or the people saying. So here, yeah, just to show that he's able to, and from that, people having some shoes will leave, but it doesn't mean, oh, this is permissible. The other hadith says, when the Prophet he saw a man with his shoes on, he said, Ya sahib as ikhla Oh, the one who's got the shoes on, take your shoes off. This hadith is to show whether it's shoes are permissible or not permissible between the grades. Same thing here. This hadith of telling us that the jama'ah is better than praying at, on your own or praying the in the masjid is better than praying in your home at your house it's not coming to show that well it is compulsory not compulsory it's just showing you the amount of difference of reward secondly this ahadith uh says as well that if you prayed it at home even though you're going to less rank even though you're going to be sinned but your prayer is valid very important because if we looked at the hadith, which is before we have, he who does hear the adhan does not come to it, then there is no prayer for him until he's got an excuse. If we just got that hadith on its own, that means you pray on your own, you pray on your house is invalid. But we know now it is means that you're going to be sinned if you pray on your own and you have the option of jama'ah. And also, if you did not have an excuse and you prayed on your own, Number one, you're going to be sinned because you have gone against the command. Number two, you're going to get less reward. Okay, so you are, when you're praying on your own or praying in the house where the option of praying jama'ah is available and it is in the masjid and you don't do so, then you're number one, you sinned if you don't have an excuse. And number two, you're going to have less reward. And the reward is a lot. Sahaba radiallahu anhum. And there was a, I wish Sheikh Mashhur to mention a story about one of the scholars. I will mention it, even though in, in my heart, I'm, I'm not really relaxed today, the authenticity of it. There's one of the scholars who had been praying Jamal all his life. And somehow he was uh, uh, not able to attend one particular Isha because of uh, that there was something wrong happened that the soldiers of the Khalifa took him away uh, wrongly okay and he couldn't cut into the gym so when he came he found that the people just left the masjid so what he did when he prayed at home that person he prayed the jama'ah 
he prayed the sorry the prayer of the Isha 25 times. Why? Because he wanted to get the 25 rewards that he used to get in the Jama'ah. I mean, that is in itself, I wouldn't say it's a sunnah to do that. If it's been done, it's not a sunnah, regardless whom he had done it. That if you miss the prayer on the Jama'ah, you pray it 25 times in order to get it. But anyway, in the story it says that he prayed 25 times. Then later on he had a dream, which is a vision, good dream. In his dream, he saw himself, okay, uh, in a horse racing. And he's trying, okay, to get to the front. Okay, he's trying to get to the front. One of those horse nightmares, uh, there's a nightmare, yeah. night riders, one of those horses, uh, sort of, is uh, one, one of the horses. He was talking to him, he's saying, regardless of how much you're going to speed up, you will never be able to catch up with us because we prayed the Jama'ah. So those are the ones on the front. Pray the Jama'ah and he is trying to catch up by praying 25 times. Uh, he says, that no matter what you're going to do, you cannot catch up with the Jama'ah. We say, well, in that story anyway, that he did not stay behind because of uh, laziness. He was a legitimate excuse, so they will have the full reward anyway. طيب. Sahaba radiallahu anhum ardahum, they were keen to pray the Jama'ah and they are the ones who used to be the most understandable or the ones who understand the sunnah properly better than the others. So they understand the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu They are the best to understand the Quran. And they are the ones who are the most eager to keep and keen to come to the Jama'ah. Now quoting hadith Abdullah ibn Masood. This hadith is in Sahih, or is Athar, I should say, in Sahih Lima Muslim. Man sarrahu an yalqa Allah ta'ala ghadan muslima. He who is he's pleased, or he wants, or he wishes, to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tomorrow, that means when he dies, as a Muslim. Then let him observe these prayers where the prayer call is called, that means in the masajid. For what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had uh, given to your Prophet the guidance paths, Sunan al Huda. And praying the Jama'ah. Jama'ah prayer, five daily prayers, is from the guidance path. And if you to pray at home, just like this person who stays behind and pray at home, you would have abandoned the sunnah of your prophet. And if you to abandon the sunnah of your prophet, then you would have been misguided. Then he said that any person would make wudu in his house and perfects it, and then he comes to the masjid of the masjid, any masjid, and uh, then he will, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him for every step that he does, hasana, remove a sayyah, and elevate him a rank. As long as he comes to the masjid. And then he says, and no one would stay behind, that means behind not to pray the jama'ah prayer, except for a hypocrite whom his hypocrisy is known. Hypocrite! For verily the man who is ill, he will come between two men carrying him to the masjid in order to be put into the role. SubhanAllah to pray the Jama'ah. Amazing. That's how the companions they were to be. Ubay ibn Ka'b radiallahu anh, He said that a man whom he doesn't know anyone else can be further away from the masjid than him. So he used to be living so far from the masjid. Yet he will never miss one salah of Jama'ah. He was said to this man, why don't you buy a donkey for yourself in order to ride it in this darkness, in this hot heat? So he says, Wallahi, I will not be pleased that if my house is to be next to the masjid, for verily, I want my traversing paces to be recorded for me when I go to the masjid. You know, when he goes to the masjid, he will traverse paces, step, step, step. I wanted that, all of that to be recorded for me. And when I come back to my father, all that to be recorded for me. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, all of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had gathered it for you. Allah gathered all of that for you. And Banu Salama, one of the companions tribes from the Ansar, when the Prophet ﷺ built a masjid, they wanted to move their places, all of them as a tribe, close to the masjid. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said to them, Banu Salama, diyarakum, tuktabu lakum atharukum. Banu Salama, stick to where you are. It means don't get close to the masjid. Your 
your place, your, your, your steps will be recorded while you're coming to the masjid. I'm not saying that if you happen to be next to the masjid, now you sell your house and go somewhere else. That's, I mean, uh, not really nonsense. I'm talking about if you are further away from the masjid, it's not an excuse. And it's actually more reward for you if you do come to the jama'ah. Look at this man, he, he said, I don't know anybody who lives far further away than this man from the masjid. Yet not a single jama'ah he would miss. For the person who does not come to the masjid in the jama'ah, and he has no excuse from the excuses that we have mentioned before. Number one, you expose yourself for the sin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you in the Quran to observe the jama'ah in the masjid. And he did not respond to his command. And the Prophet ﷺ, he commanded in his sunnah to observe the salah jama'ah in the masjid. And he did not respond to his command. Also, you have exposed yourself for the attack of the shaitan. Because the shaitan will always attack the sheep which is away from the flock. Attack the person who is away from the jama'ah. Thirdly, you have deprived yourself from the mighty reward that you're going to get if you pray the jama'ah. Because the Prophet of Allah said you're going to get 25 multiple, 27 multiple, okay? 27 ranks, 25 ranks. Every, also, every step we traverse in the masjid going to get you elevated one rank in paradise and take away your sin, give you a hasana. Subhanallah. All of that going to be uh, forgiven. From the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, also he said, if you have prayed, so that means after you reach the masjid, if you prayed and you're waiting for the following prayer, you are still in a prayer. Subhanallah. And not only that, the angels okay, would seek forgiveness for you. As long as you have, when you pray, the angels will invoke forgiveness for you. As long as you are in a praying position, in the prayer place, you will say, Allahumma, O oh Lord, salli alayhi. Pass salutation upon him. Allahumma rahamhu, O oh Lord, have mercy upon him. And you will be in a prayer as long as you're waiting for the prayer. Just like Abu Musa, Abu Musa, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, when he prayed the, with the Prophet وسلم, the Maghrib, and he stayed with his companions all the way until the Isha. Prophet Allah asked him, what are you doing? He said, well, we pray with you, Maghrib, and we want to wait to pray with you, Isha. He said, Ahsantum, well done. Well done, he said to them. Well done, he said, for the Prophet وسلم, you should be on top of the moon. So when these angels seek forgiveness and seek for mercy. Allahumma ghafir lahu, Allahumma arhamhu. As long as you don't break your wudu. So if you are in wudu, you are in a prayer. How dare you, after all of this, as a Muslim, to abandon Salat al-Jama'ah, Bismillah. Prophet Sallallahu he said, Ala adullukum, shall I inform you with what Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala removes and wipes off the sins and elevates you in ranks? He said, yes, Messenger of Allah. He said, making the wudu in a difficult situations. Cold. I'm not saying to you, go and put the water in the freezer and then have wudu with it. But the water is cold. You don't have to heat it. Okay? So the water, you don't have a heater. You don't have a boiler. You're going to get more reward. And traverse and paces to the masjid. That's one of the expiators. Expiate sins. And that is to wait for the following prayer after you have prayed. This is called ribat. And ribat is part of the jihad. Subhanallah. Like making jihad. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that those things, making wudu, traversing, uh, traversing paces to the masjid, and waiting for the prayer after the prayer, all of those three things, they wash the sins. So after this, would you dare as a person to abandon Salat al-Jama'ah, ya akhi. Allahu Prophet Sallam, you said, if you do the perfect wudu, proper wudu, and then you go out to the masjid, you're going out, nothing for the masjid, except for the masjid, okay? Then the Prophet Sallam, said, and then you pray with the Imam, your previous sins will be forgiven. Subhanallah. This is what we say, that don't really stay behind these people uh, and say and pray behind and don't pray in the masjid for very your, your good example in that are the hypocrites are the hypocrites by this one let's stop i wanted to go ahead and talk about holding to the sunnah but i excuse me jazakumullah khair i do have a big headache and the time is catching up along with us so we'll just give another eight minutes for the questions and excuse me for not really able to continue the second part 
which is holding to the sunnah. Jazakumullah khairan. Naam. Fadal ya shaykh. Jazakumullah khairan shaykh. And barakallahu feekum. Brothers and sisters, raise your hands. We have eight minutes to ask shaykh our questions. If you're a sister and you want to type the question, send it to questions admin one on the chat, please. Priority is for the Brixton students. Uh, please go ahead, Abu Umar. Nakhla. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Um, um, alhamdulillah. Um, it's one of the excuses uh, food, like if there's food prepared for you. Food, you why? What food is going to take what? All the prayer? <laughs> <laughs> so the food, you eat food and go. But if you don't go food, and I'm eating food, I'm not going to go to the prayer. Okay? So it's not an excuse. Excuse is just to delay to come to the Takbirat al Ihram. And the food that will prevent you is the food is ready. Not she's starting to cook or she hasn't finished the cook or, you know, it's just been served and everybody's there. Yes. But uh, it doesn't mean that you are, well, I will wait. No, the food is there. It's being served. So you eat whatever is, you know, uh, makes you not to think about the food and then you go to the jama'ah. Now. Kevin Sunna, go ahead, brother. Sheikh, what is considered a masjid? And also in places such as uh, airports and hospitals, they have prayer rooms. Can this also be considered a masjid? Masjid has to have a fulfilled condition. Condition which is very important is waqf. And this place is being made and designated as a masjid. So that takes out the airport because the airport room we used to have in Terminal 3, uh, a big place for uh, offering, and then they've changed it now. And they have to, make a, to walk a mile to go and get it. I remember uh, uh, these days. I remember the Terminal 3 was just close. From the shops, they just put it shifted so far away. Because they know it's only the Muslims use that room. They've got the place for the Christians, the place for the Jews. They haven't got a place for the Hindus. I haven't seen, for example, Krishna, Ram, and all of those idols there. But the three people, no people. I mean, every time I go, it's only the masjid. They're Muslims. Only one found once, a uh, Christian, black woman. Because the black people they are the ones who are really holding to the religion, the Christianity. But she was, uh, you know, she was not really right. She's like, she could see the reaction of hers towards the Muslims. The Muslims. Anyway, uh, that's why it prevented me from to go and talk to her about the deen. Uh, so these are not masajid, definitely. Because this room can be a room tomorrow. It could be a garage. It could be a shop. It has to be designated for the masjid. About number one. Number two, that we have the five daily prayers in prayed. So even a person, for example, he said, I want to designate this place for salah. And it's actually, it's a, it's a room or whatever. But it's not the five daily prayers. And they have the option, it's fine, because people not, don't come to it, Fajr. Don't come into Isha. Okay, so it is not a masjid. As for the imam, to be an imam there appointed, no, it's not a condition. So it's five daily prayers. And waqf, and there's a difference among the scholars regarding the conditions for a masjid to be a masjid. But these are the two which are the most famous two. Now, go ahead, please. Asalaamu As Alaikum, Shaykh. My question is about gelatine and a hadith related to it, or sort of related to it. A sister said to me that she cares for someone who was prescribed capsules. She was going to open up the capsules and give them to her in water, the contents, like she usually does. But the leaflet said not to open up the capsules. So she went ahead and just gave her the capsules, I think. But her husband said that she should not do that because there's a hadith. Allah has sent down both the disease and the cure, and he has appointed a cure for every disease so treat yourselves medically, but use nothing unlawful. Abu Dawood, Tib 11. What, what does that hadith got to the gelatine? Hadith is sahih, authentic. So if you so, think about what, what, is the, what is the haram, what is the thing that says gelatine is haram? Hadith is sahih. People so, treat yourself and treat yourself with halal. And also Prophet he said that there is not a single disease except there is a cure. And he said, Please, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He said, uh, "Treat yourself, but don't treat yourself with haram." What is the proof? So she, what she was confused about is that gelatin is in the capsules. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. But no, I mean, that, that hadith tells us not to treat ourselves with haram. It doesn't say if gelatin is haram or not. That's another issue. It tells us not to treat ourselves, for example, with alcohol. 
they say sometimes alcohol cleans up your body alcohol no it's alcohol is haram it's haram obvious 100 percent and there's no doubt about that treat yourself for example with pork treat yourself with swine that's of haram حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةُ وَالدَّمُ وَلَحْمُ الْخِنْزِيرِ لَحْمُ الْخِنْزِيرِ حَرَامْ It's the ayah of Quran here. But the gelatin, who said it's haram? You have to have it. So the gelatin is, what is it? To know what it is, then we'll know. So gelatin is an extract, chemically processed, became gelatin. But it's being chemically processed. And I'm not saying it cooked. So it's not, I'm not cooking meat and then it's being cooked pork. No, no, no. This pork meat, it had, for example, decomposed uh, to such an extent that it became like a rotten thing. Decomposed so much, it just transformed. If you call it istihala. And a good example of that, grape juice. Doesn't it become alcohol? How does it become alcohol? How, how, what is the process of grape juice becoming wine? Wine is haram, grape juice is 100% halal. We know that we know that if the juice, grape juice, is being put in a certain way, under certain circumstances, it will turn into wine. So do we now say the words haram? Yes. Do we now say the grape juice haram? No, it's still halal. But let's just reverse the process. And there it is. We had wine, which is made of grape. Processed it back to the grape juice. Now, for me to process it, I'm not allowed to touch alcohol, but it's being processed already. And it says to me, onto this bottle, which is, contains grape juice, it's being processed from grape wine. I mean, originally it was wine, but now it's grape juice. Halal haram, So I am concerned about what I've got in my hand. I was reading actually in this one. It hasn't got any gelatin, so I could show it to you. So I'm concerned about this. I'm not concerned about what it was. So this alcohol turned, which is wine, turned into grape juice. So if in the ingredients says it was, it was made from red wine, I don't care what it was made from. It's like you're buying charcoals to burn your, you know, your, your meat with, make a barbecue. And it says in the ingredients, it was, it's made of, uh, let's say, poo. Poo, the normal poo. The poo, they left it somehow, and they processed it, and they put it in the sun, and they turned it into charcoals. I'm not really bothered about what it was. I'm bothered what it is now. So this is grape juice. The same thing here with gelatin. Gelatin is gelatin. I'm not concerned what is it made from. It made from bovin, made from cows, it made of from pork, it made of from crocodiles, it made of from anything. I'm not concerned what is it made from. I'm concerned about this product. Is it haram or not? The gelatin itself. Gelatin is not meat anymore. Have you ever tasted? I have. So ice cream's got gelatin. Mm, tastes like a cow. I never. Or you tasted, for example, sweets. They taste like goats. Because that or pork. No. So that is processed chemically so much that it's not really carrying the ingredients of the one before exactly like the juice which is made from wine we're not allowed to make wine into juice as a muslim but it's being made for us already because we're not allowed to touch alcohol we're not allowed to work with alcohol to change it into halal we're not allowed to make beer to change into barley for example drink even though it was made from the barley so, i mean how can i simple i make it easy for the top let's say for the sake of argument that this gelatin has been processed chemically, has been processed chemically, okay, into a different substance, still is carrying the characteristics of the haram, whether it is pork, whether it is animals which are not being slaughtered, halal, it's not halal gelatin, haram gelatin. It hasn't been processed. Okay, how much quantity of the gelatin is in that item? How much gelatin was being put into the chocolate? That's what I'm asking. Have you ever, by chance or by mistake, whatever, you've eaten ice cream, it's got gelatin, you've tasted cow into it. And you said there's a taste of goat in it or taste of pork in it. How many? No way. Because the amount that goes into it is so little. It's exactly like if I have this drink and 
I, I drank from it. And somebody said to me, you know, I was urinating next to this bottle. And what drop of my urine, which is filth and impure, jumped into this bottle. I would be disgusted to read, but it's still halal to drink. I am not going to drink it because I give it to somebody else to drink it. Because for it to be haram to drink, this drink has to change. Either the taste or the color or the smell. If one of these change, mm, smells urine. Uh, it looks like the urine. It tastes like urine, then I will not drink it. But if none of the three characteristics had changed, then, then if these, one of these three characteristics has not changed, we know for sure that it is still halal. Otherwise, we're going to make lots of, uh, 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 you know, lots of uh, ponds to be not allowed to be going there because we know that some people go jump in that pond and urinated there. You know, I'm talking about swamps and ponds. Gonna make a lot, you're gonna allow to go to the sea. How many people not just weed in the sea, they're pooed in the sea? Okay, who said that the water is too much, cannot be polluted by one drop, or even if you did all your urination inside that pond because the pond is big. Same thing, the ice cream is big, the sweet is big, and that amount of gelatin is very small. So, I hope that this makes it really simple and easy to these people to understand. Uh, this gelatin, not harabi, akhwan. It's not. Because the quantity is being used is really small. And I believe, not only that, that it's being processed completely to a different thing. It's not like what the people say. If, if, it's like you, you, you're saying to me that you boil pork so much and it becomes boiled pork to be halal. I'm not saying this, yaki. If you boil the pork so many times, it's still going to be pork. If you cook it so many times, it's going to be pork. But if you burn it beyond any recognition and it became like something solid, it's not meat anymore, it became charcoals, that doesn't really become pork. It becomes under the category of charcoals because it's been uh, processed either by burning so much that it's being burnt and being put into a chamber or whatever it is. And let's, inshallah, I mean, this question so many times has been asked, so let's please... Uh, uh, upgrade to another question because this question, as I said, I dealt with it so many times, still coming back to me. Still coming back to it me. Was, it was just because it was related no, 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 to I'm, that hadith. Sister Zuhra, Sister Zuhra, I'm not really asking, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking mm. in general. So this hadith doesn't really bring anything, Akhwani. This hadith just says that the Prophet وسلم, said, treat yourself and treat yourself with haram. For verily Allah Azza wa did not create a disease unless he created the cure. So he will not put the cure in something haram. But this is not to do with the gelatin. Yes, the cure is not in something haram. The cure is not in alcohol. The cure is not in pork. But gelatin itself is a haram or not. That's a different scenario. It's not to do with the hadith. So you, Zuhra, or other people, if you say some hadith, who's hadith Abu Dawood number something? Investigate this hadith that talks about gelatin. Yes, we agree with this hadith. This hadith talks about we cannot use haram like alcohol because they said alcohol, for example, it will clean your, uh, they said, for example, the stone in your kidney. I'm not going to use that. There's an alternative, Zahi. I'm not going to use, for example, coffee medicine, which has got alcohol so much in it. Coffee medicine has got alcohol. So, this hadith doesn't so don't be scared. It's some Abu Hadith, Abu Dawood, number such and such. Yeah, subhanallah. I'm not talking about Yusuf Zuhra, but this is for all of everybody. Listen to me, please understand the argument regarding this uh, uh, issue of gelatin. But I, I know at the end of the day, some people they need you don't want to create fitna as well. My daughters are in boarding school, these boarding schools are Hanafis. And they are Hanafis very strict regarding this issue. So if I bring them sweets, which I get them here, like Haribo, okay? The one which is made of gelatin, says gelatin. And they, they take them to school, they're small kids, and then they're going to be telling them off. And they haven't got the, the arguments that I've got. So I just bring them proper sweets, which has got halal gelatin. I have to go, uh, I'm not going to make, uh, you know, sort of fight here. Because I know the kids will not be able to confront their teachers with this. And as well, the other kids, I will tell them, yeah, gelatin, read at the back. Because some people read the E, E, something, some E, E, the numbers, all of these numbers, subhanAllah. I mean, they spend so much time into this. I mean, even when I buy in, in the supermarkets, I have as well with this, I have the person who, who I'm scanning, and he's a brother, Pakistani, mashallah. And I'm scanning, he just stopped. He's looking at the thing that I'm buying. 
And I know what he's going to say. I know what he's going to say. I said, can you just please save me time? Put it there. I know halal. If you want to ask me, I am. I know about these issues. I give it to it. It's halal. Just leave it. And he just wants to help me. I know he wants to help me. So he wants to read about it. So it's a crisps. Bag of crisps. We've got something. Gelatin or whatever it is. I said, yeah, just leave it. I know it's halal. Just leave it there. If you're not going to miss halal, it's up to you. So I, I don't really go in front of people. I will tell the people, this is what I believe. And that's the correct. If you want to follow it, you want to follow it. If you don't want to follow it, it's up to you. We're not going to force you to do anything. But as a student of knowledge, you should know this argument very well. And uh, uh, يعني, uh, we're facing this gelatin. We have يعني, this gelatin. Uh, it's been running with me for 20 years now. And we have fatwa from the scholars as well. Alhamdulillah. I have exactly what is Muhammad Bazmul. Hafizahullah. Even though he's not from the scholars, but he had made the same argument. I, I made more because it's from Sheikh Al-Albani. It's not from me. This is the Sheikh Al-Albani, Rahmatullah Ali's fatwa. <coughs> Wallahu ta'ala alam. Jazakumullah. Jazakallah khairin, Sheikh. Barakallah fiqh, Sheikh. You gave us 10 minutes extra now. Tayyip, I'm going to just uh, call for the brothers, if you don't mind. Uh, we can leave the questions, if you don't mind, please. I've got a Wallahi, a long day, I had a long day, so please forgive me. Um, and, but actually the question of Zuhra had wake, wake me up, woke me up. It did not mean really make me annoyed. No, no. Woke me up because I want to give you a, a, a very good, strong vaccination regarding all of these people who are coming to you regarding the gelatin. And I tell you now something, maybe, actually, maybe I would retract my statement later on or not, but I have tasted both Haribos of sweets. The one they say it's halal gelatin, it doesn't taste properly. And the one who says just gelatine, it tastes better. I don't know what it is. I'm not saying go for the gelatine, which is halal, not halal. But I'm just saying the one who says gelatine, halal, is Swiss are not really good. What the Haribo says gelatine, which is being given in the Asdan supermarkets, is different from the one what I find in the shops where it says halal, they're tasteless. Allahu, Allahu a'lam. Subhanakallah, bihamdik. Ashadu la ilat astaghfiruka wa